Close your eyes and you might think you'd stepped out of a time machine into George Orwell's Catalonia. Then it was the communists who chanted no passaran as they fought the fascists at the gate. Today, that chant, they shall not pass, has been co-opted to the cause of Catalan separatism. Their target, the Spanish police, whose methods seemed indeed to echo the dark days of Franco's dictatorship. But this was not a demonstration against the despotic regime. This was the police force of an EU nation in 2017, snatching ballot boxes and attacking citizens waiting peacefully to cast their votes. If the government in Madrid thought it would break the resolve of the Catalans, then it miscalculated. News of the police crackdown at some polling stations spread to others on social media. Tell me what's going on and what's we been are, happening. We are trying to, to prevent the police to come from coming in here because we know that they're, they're going to take the boxes. And we basically, we don't have many tools to do that. All we need is just a big crowd and just hang on there because they're going to come, they might come with uh, weapons, they might come and hit us. We just want to vote democratically. We just want to make nothing wrong. We just want to, for the world to hear us, um, for Spain to hear us. How do you feel about what the, the reaction of the police? Um, ashamed, deeply ashamed. The referendum was illegal under Spanish law. The EU has taken the same view. But that didn't deter the voters. If anything, the violence by police made them more determined. Several people said it reminded them of Franco's brutal dictatorship. I remember Franco, Modest told me. I remember that time. We went through hell. The way they manipulated us. Franco was terrible. He was a dictator. At many polling stations, to be fair, the police were not in evidence at all. Still, the organizers were prepared for trouble. They played a kind of cat and mouse game over ballot boxes. So, I think we're being taken to see the decoy ballot boxes that they've got in case the police arrive. We're taken round the back of the polling station. A car arrives. In the boot, they've got an empty plastic container, which they'll fill with blank ballot papers. We will put them inside these boxes and, they, and we will give them to the police. So if they bring them, we don't miss the real votes. It's not the kind of thing that election observers tend to approve of, but desperate times call for creative measures. Out of about 2,300 polling stations, more than 300 were closed down by police, according to the Catalan authorities. Those that remained open did so thanks to the overwhelming presence of voters who hung around after casting their ballots. As the polls closed, firefighters were drafted in in case the police tried to disrupt the count. As they waited for the votes to be tallied, supporters of the referendum gathered in central Barcelona. Not all were in favour of independence. What's important, they said, was their right to vote. This is only partly about independence. It's also about the old traditional divide between right and left in Spain. Because at the last general election, over half of this city voted for centre-left or left-wing parties. And in a way, holding this referendum at all was like sticking two fingers up to the centre-right government in Madrid. The Spanish government insisted no referendum had taken place, and legally speaking, they were right. But that didn't seem to matter to the people on the Plaza Catalunya, as the Catalan leader claimed they'd won the right to statehood. But not everyone was celebrating. Counter-demonstrators, wrapped in the flag of a united Spain, clashed with their opponents. They were eventually escorted to safety under the protection of the police. 
After the euphoria of referendum night, this morning, people gathered outside the offices of the regional government. Officials emerged, but they didn't provide answers to some now pressing questions. If Catalonia declares unilateral independence, would Madrid make good on its promise to suspend regional autonomy? And what then? We need a new referendum because it's obvious that yesterday we didn't have the referendum we wanted. The European Union cannot remain indifferent or silent in front of what, what had happened. And I think it should have a more active uh, attitude in favor of, of, of arbitration now. Uh, either we have an international arbitration or Mr. Mariano Rajoy should resign. And if he doesn't resign, uh, the Spanish parliament should pass a vote of non-confidence on him. This evening, demonstrators gathered outside the headquarters of the national police to protest against the violence at polling stations on Sunday. Both sides say they are not the ones trying to divide Spain. Each accuses the other of doing exactly that.